If you ever needed a reason to subscribe to Meta Quest Plus, this would be it. Meta just introduced the games catalog, which is their take on Game Pass, PlayStation Plus catalog, and Viport Infinity. Hi, I'm Michael, and in this video, I covered the importance of this update. I'll go through the pros, the cons, and how it compares to its competitors. So Meta introduced MetaQuest Plus last summer, which was their new VR subscription service. And if you ever own the PS3 or PS4, this should be familiar to you because it works similarly to PlayStation Plus. Every month, Meta handpicks two VR titles that you can redeem and add to your library, and these games will stay in your library for as long as your subscription is active. Once you cancel your MetaQuest Plus subscription, these games are no longer in your library unless you purchase them, just like PlayStation Plus. Over the years, all the major players introduced their own Netflix-style games catalog. One of the earliest iterations was PlayStation Now, which Sony introduced about a decade ago. The catch is that it was a cloud streaming service, and there wasn't an option to download games until a few years later. Microsoft set the foundation by introducing Game Pass in 2017. Players were given unlimited access to a catalog of first and third party video game titles and you had the option to play them either locally or through the cloud. The following year, Nintendo introduced Switch Online, which gave you a library of NES and SNES games. They later added games from the N64, Sega Genesis, and the Game Boy family of handhelds. HTC introduced Viporn Infinity in 2019, which is dedicated to VR games. One of the biggest advantages of this service is that it supports non-HTC headsets, including MetaQuest and Valve Index. And in 2022, PlayStation announced that they were revamping PlayStation Plus into a three-tier service to include the game catalog. You still get a handful of games every month, but you now have access to a backlog of classic and modern PlayStation games. So it seems that Meta has finally gotten the memo, and they just revamped MetaQuest Plus. In addition to the two monthly games, there's now a games catalog that will be rotating in and out, similar to Game Pass and PlayStation Plus. Now let's take a look. Okay, here we are in the Quest Store, and if you hit the Quest Plus icon, you'll see this month's pair of games, which are Contractors and Shadow Point. As you know, these games will stay in your library as long as your subscription is active. Down below is the new games catalog. Right now, there's only a pool of 13 games. A few of them were already featured as Quest Plus monthly games, like Red Matter, Onward, and Walkabout Mini Golf. Adding a game works just like PS Plus. There's a redeem button that replaces the game's price tag. Alternatively, you can redeem games on the computer by going to the Meta Experiences website and finding the Quest Plus tab. My preferred method is to do it from your smartphone using the Meta Quest app. Since my iPhone is with me at all times, it's much faster to open up the app rather than to boot up my headset every time. So will these games stay in this pool forever? No, it's just like Game Pass. It's up to Meta to decide if and when these games will rotate. It even says so on their support page. So if Meta decides to remove one of these titles from the catalog, you no longer have access to the game, even if your subscription is active. You'll have to buy the game if you want to add it permanently to your library. So what games are in the initial lineup? If you've been subscribed to Quest Plus since day one like I have, then you should have Red Matter, Onward, and Walkabout Mini Golf already in your library. Red Matter is a sci-fi puzzle game set in an alternate Cold War universe. Onward is a tactical multiplayer and online shooter, and Walkabout Mini Golf is probably the best VR mini golf game there is. New to Quest Plus is The Climb, a rock climbing game from Crytek, the developers of Crisis and Far Cry 1. Until You Fall is a hack and slash roguelike game from Shell Games, the makers of I Expect You to Die. Jurassic World Aftermath Collection is a stealth game set two years after the events of Jurassic World. Fruit Ninja is a VR version of the immensely popular smartphone game. Fort Scramble is a mishmash of tennis, bowling, and baseball. Hand Physics Lab is a puzzle game that makes full use of the hand tracking feature. A Township Tale is an online open world RPG that features crafting. Demio is a tabletop RPG that's heavily inspired by Dungeons and Dragons. Espar 1 is a stealth first person shooter inspired by Metal Gear Solid and Splinter Cell. And 2MD VR Football Unleashed All Star is an arcade style football game that focuses on the 2 minute drill. So far, it's a pretty decent list with a good variety of genres. I wish the lineup was more, but it's still new so I'm expecting it to get better over time. Now the big question is, how does it compare to its main competitor, Viport Infinity? So HTC is one of Meta's biggest competitors in the VR market, and right now, the HTC Vive headset is trailing right behind the Meta Quest on the Steam hardware survey. Price-wise, Viport Infinity is a bit more expensive compared to Meta Quest Plus. It's $12.99 for the monthly plan, and it's $8.99 per month if you purchase the annual plan. Compare that to Quest Plus $7.99 per month, or $60 annually. However, Viport Infinity has been around much longer, and it shows in their library. 
There are over 1300 VR titles to choose from. About 700 of those are listed as compatible with MetaQuest. There are some caveats though when using Viport Infinity on the MetaQuest. The biggest issue is that you need a PC via Questlink or Airlink. There is no dedicated Viport Infinity app on the MetaQuest, so all Vive games need to run off your computer. One of the things I love about the MetaQuest is that the games run directly off the headset. You also need to be aware that Viport Infinity uses Steam VR in order to run on the MetaQuest. So when you open up your Steam VR menu, there should be a Vive tab at the bottom. Alternatively, you can launch games directly from the Viport app, but it will still launch Steam VR. Another issue I found is compatibility. Even though the Viport store lists over 700 games that work on MetaQuest, I don't think they've been fully tested. All of these games were meant to be played on the HTC Vive. And on some games, you'll see the button layout for the Vive controller, even though you're using a Quest controller. It still works, but it kind of feels weird seeing a foreign control layout. And if you need to know, yes, Steam Link and Virtual Desktop work perfectly fine. Doing so bypasses the Oculus Desktop app. It feels so much better connecting to my PC without having to plug any wires. Overall, I think running Viport Infinity on the Quest is pretty much a double-edged sword. Yes, you do get access to a massive library of games, but you also have to run through the hoops and hurdles just to get it to run. Okay, back to Quest Plus. So I understand that the game catalog is a new feature, and I don't expect Meta to get everything right the first time around. But when you compare it to Game Pass or PS Plus, there are a few quirks that need to be addressed. The first is the lack of a recognizable icon or logo. On Xbox, every game that's included in Game Pass has a Game Pass logo clearly visible in the lower left corner. Similarly, on the PlayStation, the PS Plus icon is also displayed in the lower left corner. And if you go to the game's description page, it will let you know that you can download it through PlayStation Plus. As of right now, the only way to know if a game is on Quest Plus is to go to the Quest Store and look at the list. So you know how if a game is on App Lab, there's an App Lab icon, right? Well, wouldn't it be nice if there was a Quest Plus icon in my library to show that the game is part of the Quest Plus catalog? It would make my life so much easier knowing which games I paid for and which games I redeemed from my subscription. Also, there's no way of knowing which games are coming and going, at least not yet. On Game Pass, there's a Coming Soon page that lets you know which games are being added to the library. And there's also a Leaving Soon page for games set to expire. Same thing with PS Plus. There's a recently added page for new additions to the catalog. And if you need to know what's leaving, you can check it on the Last Chance to Play page. So, is MetaQuest Plus worth it? Well, considering the fact that Meta added a whole catalog of games at no additional charge, I'd say it's worth more now than ever. Consider what happened to PlayStation Plus. It used to be that the cost of PS Plus was $59.99 annually. Now, for the essential plan, it's $79.99 and that doesn't include the game catalog. If you want access to the game catalog, you have to bump up to $135 annually. Other than Nintendo Switch Online, MetaQuest Plus is still one of the least expensive options out there. As far as Viport Infinity goes, I highly recommend that you sign up for the free 14-day trial, which is what I did. You still need a PC capable of running Steam VR. It's a good way of checking out the Vive library, even though some of the titles are the same as MetaQuest. And if you change your mind, you can always cancel before your trial ends. Now my main concern is will the cost of Quest Plus stay the same? Last year, Xbox Game Pass prices went up by a few dollars, Game Pass for console went up by one whole dollar, and Game Pass Ultimate went up from $14.99 to $16.99. As a matter of fact, the entire subscription industry went up in price. Netflix, Disney Plus, Max, Amazon Prime Video, and Paramount Plus all increased the price of their subscriptions within the past year. I don't think MetaQuest Plus can hold out at the $60 price point for long, especially if they plan on adding more games to the catalog. By the way, let me know in the comments what you think. Have you tried all the games in the Quest Plus catalog? And if so, do you think it's worth the money? 